A few months ago, one of our interns asked if they could take me out to lunch. They wanted to ask me for a piece of career advice. And over the last 10 years, I've had a lot of young people, ambitious, smart, certainly as ambitious and probably smarter than me, ask this question a number of times. And the question is simple. It's, how can I be a young founder and a young CEO and make my life's work something that I found, that's me and in my DNA? And as the intern asked this question, I leaned back in my chair, and I thought about the Tim Ferriss and Tony Robbins cottage industry that has sprouted up around being an entrepreneur and raising capital, pitching businesses and IPOs. And I realized that I did have a piece of advice, but I had never heard it from one of these authors or bloggers that I love. I had a piece of advice that was so simple, so succinct, that I knew when I delivered it to this intern that it was gonna be met with mixed results. It was three words, and here it is. Call your mom. Super basic, and the intern leaned back and looked at me incredulously, as I knew she would. Close your eyes for a moment, I said. Imagine waking up every day at 6 a.m. in the morning, lacing up your shoes for a daily 6 a.m. morning run that you need more than almost anything else. You've needed it to really set your mind at ease, to help find that zen beneath the jackhammering that I imagine we all agree we deal with on a daily basis. But before you can even head out the door, you notice that there's a few dozen pesky emails that require your response. Emails that over the year have continued to compound as the organizations you're involved in and are tasked with leading have continued to grow. And if you don't respond to those emails before that moment, your day and your team's day will be set off course, off kilter. So it becomes your responsibility to set the needle. Now, I am one of those people who has been fortunate enough to get to work on things that I love and never feel like I have to go to work any day. At the age of 20, I founded the first company and was able to grow it to produce content with people like Spike Lee at Netflix. At age 25, we founded our second business, a media finance company that's gone on to finance about 300 films uh, and have premieres and nominations at places like the Oscars and the Academy Awards, Golden Globes. And then two years ago, we acquired our third business that doubled the size of our organization overnight. To young people in our organization, interns and people joining the team, in the rearview mirror, success looks like a pretty straight line. But I explained to this intern that I have viewed being a leader, whether it's a coach, a team member, in a marriage, leading businesses, as unfolding a piece of blank white paper and quite often drawing our own map. And we're then tasked with leading those that follow behind us, whether one person or a thousand, to have faith that we have an understanding and self-confidence as to where we're going. And like any great map maker, I explained, any great explorer, what do you need? Well, you need a really good compass. You need a compass whose needle is able to point you back to true north on days when you've fallen astray. For me, I've been fortunate enough to have a relationship with my mother be the tip of that compass. I've been able to define my life and look back at the inflection points and moments where there were multiple paths to take, and the choice that was taken was not by first impulse, but by guidance and thoughtfulness. I define that compass needle, I explained to the intern, not just as the relationship with my mother. I understand many listeners and those here today may not have that direct connection with their mom or a sibling or a loved one, but find that compass, I challenge the intern, and define your path forward accordingly. At this point, the intern was a little bit more interested. I thought maybe I knew something about what I was talking about. How do I get started with this? It's easy, truthfully, in finding three core principles that you can focus on. The first is to do it regularly. Like anything, for anyone who's an athlete, owns a business, you find that by doing things repetitively, it becomes a part of your routine and it sets you on course. And I explain that most often, and more often than not, we live in a society where we're told that if we're lost or we need to ask for directions, that we're somehow failing. I explained to the intern that you have to challenge that impulse. Recognize that by being lost, you're pushing the outer limits. And by doing so, you're actually able to bring someone else into the narrative to help guide you on that next step. The second piece is to do it first thing. Now, there are a million Tim Ferriss cliches about how important the morning is, but it's true. I've always subscribed to this notion of grabbing the day by the morning and setting that course forward. The day will certainly be full of presidential Twitter meltdowns, news feeds begging to pull our attention away from what's important, and so the morning is that zen beneath that jackhammering 
to set the pace. And the third, perhaps most important, is to have the self-confidence to admit when you're lost yourself, to take the compass out of your pocket and consult with it. Don't feel bigger than or smarter than. The best CEOs and the best founders were led to believe have all of the answers. I assure you they absolutely do not. They have great folks around them who are their defining needle on that compass. The intern at this point was a little bit more enthused, as was I. And I realized that by having this relationship with my mom, it had led me to where I was today. I could remember specific moments in my life, one in particular that I explained that morning, which was, I remember being a 20-year-old in college, and let me set the record straight, I have very pragmatic parents that have nothing to do with the entertainment business. And so for the first time, I was gonna make the pronouncement on one of these runs that I was gonna raise some money, shoot a feature film, and move to Los Angeles to launch a production company. Those are about the three worst things you can hear from an undergraduate student if you're a parent. I half expected silence on the other side of the phone, and I half expected confusion and frustration. Instead, the opposite happened. The relationship with my mom was able to steer that next step because she knew where I stood on that map and where I needed to go next. So again, I leave you here today with three things and challenge you on three points. The first is to call your mom. If you find that your mother is in fact your compass, rest knowing that you're in tremendous company. When Gandhi himself looked back on his life, he reflected on the relationship he had with his mother and their daily conversations that led him to a style of leadership and empathy that shaped the entire foundation for how he led throughout his entire life. Bill and Melinda Gates on the other side and the upper, upper limits of success by how entrepreneurs tend to define it, they remembered discussions with their mom who recognized where they were on their life map, that it was no longer important to ship the great next great piece of software or to edge out the next competitor, but that it was time to lead their own path with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who they directly credit for making the world truly a better place outside of their business contributions. The second piece that I challenge you on is if you find that your mother is not that compass, is to find that person. Find who can be that defining light, that north star, that compass arrow, whatever cheesy analogy you want to use, I challenge you to find it. And the third piece is to have enough self-awareness and courage to recognize when you're lost. Forget the societal beliefs that by being lost or needing to ask for directions is somehow wrong or flawed. And as for me, well, I think you have a pretty good idea of where I'm going to be tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. I think you have a pretty good idea about who I'm going to be talking with. But the most freeing and liberating concept is that both myself and my mother have no idea what we'll be talking about. Because the only through line in being a leader of any kind is that tomorrow you'll wake up with a significant number of new challenges that will require you to reach into that pocket, consult your compass, steady the arrow north, and head forward. Thank you.